What's up, Nail Geeks, and welcome to March 2024, I almost said 2023, Polish Pickup. I have quite a few to show you all this month, and this time we have the theme sleepovers. Um, this was such a really cool theme, and when it got nominated, and or rather voted on to, and it won, I was so excited because I just, I just knew, I felt it in my bones that we were going to get pinks and lavenders and real sweet type of almost confectionery sort of colors. And I want bright colors. I want spring colors. I'm, I'm just ready. I'm so ready for warm weather. Uh, I know I'm in the South. So some of you up North or, you know, other parts of the world where it's like super snowy and miserable and stuff, you're like, it is disgusting that you think that your 50 degree weather, 40 degree weather is uh, too cold, but I'm a Southern girl and I'm a weenie when it comes to the cold. So I'm going to just complain and moan about it until I get back to my spring and summertime weather. I was completely correct that we are going to get these beautiful, you know, pinks and these like light type of purples and these mints. It's all over the place. Um, I think you can sort of get an idea of that in my collage photo on my thumbnail, but um, I'm, I'm super stoked. Uh, sleepovers were always something very special to me. It was a reprieve from my parents. It was a way for me to just get into all kinds of trouble with my girlfriends and just, I have a lot of really good memories. So seeing these inspirations, whether it was from sleepovers of many, many years ago with uh, certain uh, games from the 90s or what have you. And then later on as a as a tween and a teenager as sleepovers, it was just really nice seeing all these inspirations. So what a nostalgic little twist. And I really liked it. So before we get to the swatches, we are going to do our shaming corner. This is where I shame our winners from the previous month for my giveaway. If you are new around here, if you are new to how I do my polish pickup videos, hello, how are you? Um, I have a giveaway on each of my videos where 10 of you, I pick random comments in the comment section on each video to win a $10 PPU gift code. Uh, the giveaway is also going to go for this video too. If you win, then you need to email me. I will reply to your comment. I also have a pinned comment on the videos too. You'll email me and I say hi, and then I give you your code. Not every month people will email me back. And so we're going to shame them. Shame, shame, shame. You entered a giveaway and then you didn't come back to see if you won. Quite a few of you again. We are just kicking 2024 off on a fantastic note, I guess. So we're going to thoroughly shame uh, Stephen All 007. Uh, we're going to shame Polished Kukui, if I said that correct. Kuke? Kuke. I think it's Kuke. Um, we are going to shame diametrically opposed to zeros. Lily, Lily, Mon. Lily, 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 Limon. I think that's what it says. And then we're also going to super, super shame simply ki Kiwi. Y'all are really, uh, you're... You're trying me this month. This is uh, Simply Kiwi is what I'm going to call you. Um, if your name is on the screen around my head, please email me, thepolishedmage at hotmail.com, and I can get you your code from your February entry. As for uh, this video, I'm going to have the giveaway going until, let's see, I'm hoping I can beat wishlisting again this month. Fingers crossed. I want to do it for all of 2024. We'll see. But uh, I'm going to have it run until... February 27th. So that's a Tuesday before the shop opens and I will announce winners at 4 p.m. Central Time. Please know I do have littles. Um, I have a lot going on in my personal life at any given moment. So sometimes I'm not exactly on the dot for 4 p.m. Central. I do my best. If you don't see me at 4 p.m. Central, either replying to comments or leaving a pinned comment on this video, uh, just, just give me a little bit. I will do my damnedest to get 4 p.m. Central time. So 10 of you just all you gotta do is leave a comment. Um, say hi, what have you. I love reading the comments and I do my best to try to interact if I see any questions or anything like that. But sometimes life gets distracting and, and I am not able to answer everyone. But feel free to leave whatever you want to on the video. Um, with that said, I also want to address another thing that's happening too. Uh, it really popped up big time last month for February. 
there are bots that go through and they see, you know, if on my, my uh, video names, I'll put giveaway just so you guys know I have a giveaway running for the video, or if it's in my description box or whatever, uh, there's bots that will steal uh, my profile image and they will try to say, I don't know, I've seen like telegram me or something, whatever. Quick blanket statement, I will never ask you for anything. I don't even know what the hell a telegram is. So it is what it is. I will only ask you, please email me at my official email, thepolishedmage at hotmail.com. Don't fall for these scammers. I do my best to go in and report and delete it off the video. Many of you do the same thing to, for me as well, and I'm very appreciative of that. So moving on, we are going to uh, check out the swatches. We are going to look at all the pretties. We'll get to wallet topper. And at the end of the video, we will go over what has caught my eye in the makers spoilers thread. So without further ado, let's dive right in. And we are starting this off with Baroness X 8-bit. This is described as a jewel-toned magenta fluid art polish with green to blue shimmer. This one's inspired by uh, playing video games at 90s slumber parties. This one's 13 with no cap. Okay, so I'm just quickly blowing through how I do fluid art polish. And those are the colors I'm using. I chose to use a very, very pale pink, black, white to kind of complement that magenta jewel toned deeper sort of color. So what I have found to be the easiest way to do this is just get messy with it. Make dots all over the place. I got this little silicone mat here gifted to me from Demi. She does carry these in her shop when she opens once a month. If you're curious, there's also black, white, I believe clear, if I'm not mistaken, and this pink color. Super useful when you're doing all kinds of nail art, including nail stamping decals and of course fluid art. You'll want to have it run over the mat and just gently encourage it to come together. I like to do this little pinch sort of method here just to make sure that my decal is turning into one decal as opposed to a bunch of little droplets all over. There's really no perfect way to do this. It's whatever works for you, whatever is going to give you that design that you're looking for. And then when I'm finished, I like to stretch out the mat really big. And then that way it makes the decal kind of force more of those cells to form. And of course, no swatch of fluid art polish from me is complete without showing what it looks like wearing it by itself. Yes, you can wear fluid art polish without fluid arting it for I guess like a better way to describe that. Um, this is a very jelly base if you choose to wear it by itself like this. I think two, maybe three coats. This does have a very plumping type of base to it. So I think honestly two coats is where you wanna stop. This is a true jelly if you wear it like this. So please note, if you have a prominent visible nail line, you'll probably see it. Now that my decal dried down and I polished the other two nails, I guess my accent nails for if you want to call it that. And I put a layer of a base coat, just whatever on your nails, doesn't matter. Just something to make it sticky and then you just pop it on there. Um, then I go in with a shovel tool, a cuticle pusher if you will, and just get the excess off. Now this can get messy if you do use a black cream in your fluid art polish. Black is very much like red. You know, when you're cleaning up, it can get pretty messy. So another way to do this is using liquid latex on your skin, as long as you don't have a latex allergy, of course. But uh, that's just a, another way to do it. And then, of course, I just blew through the cleanup process here because it, it can take a little bit if you are not careful. You'll want to finish with a good glossy top coat to smooth everything out. And you're finished with some really cool fluid art nails. And next up, we've got Beau Rev. This is Girl Talk, described as a bright baby blue base packed with large particle color shifting shimmers, paired with red, pink, orange, gold, iridescent shimmer, and finished with blue reflective glitter. This one's inspired by the board game, price is 12, and there is no cap. So sound off below on any of these inspirations, of uh, the ones with the games, if y'all played it too, because I sure as a hell did. Girl Talk is stunning. All of our uh, shimmer lovers. This is beautiful, easy to build up. It does have a somewhat curly formula in how it applies. I'm going to suggest three coats for opacity. It is a bit on the softer side to allow that beautiful shimmer to shine through. And it has a very harsh dry down to it because again, hello, packed full of shimmer. So you'll want to finish with a plumping glossy top coat. 
of your choice. Although I think this will look cool matte, but glossified, you get that really beautiful color roll. And here is Cameo Colors. This is We've Been Bugged, described as a mauve-ish taupe magnetic base that shifts from pink to gold to copper, full of pink to orange to gold, and blue to purple shifty micro flakes, silver hollow micro flakes, and a touch of scattered hollow sparkle. This one's inspired by the Saved by the Bell episode, Fatal Distraction, where Zach and Screech bugged the girls sleepover to find out who Kelly plans to ask the dance. This one's 12 with a cap of 250. So we have a somewhat jelly formula here. I always will suggest when using magnetic polishes to make sure you've got quite a bit of pigment on your nails to work with. So for that reason, I'm gonna suggest going to three coats and then magnetizing. Or if you want to take a really long time and magnetize each layer, go for it. But it reacted incredibly well with the DRK Magic Magnetic Top Coat here. I do wanna note that the magnetic effect itself is what I would consider quite a bit on the subtle side. My full hand shot gives you a really good idea of that. At angles, you will see a little bit more dimension from where the magnetic particles separated away from the taupe-like base color, if that makes sense. This dries down quite flat, so you'll want to use a good glossy top coat. And Chameleon brings us Sweet Secrets. This is a thermal that goes from blue when cold to a cool toned pink when warm with bronze to orange iridescent flakes and silver hollow glitters in various sizes. This is inspired by the secrets we shared with our friends at sleepover parties. Price is $13.50 and there's a cap of 300 bottles. Now it does state in our PR information that this was made intentionally on the sheer side to allow a pond effect to form where you can see the hollow glitters in between your layers. I do agree with that. And I think some of you may wanna go up to three coats if you're rocking super long nails. Otherwise, I think two coats is perfect. I do think that the formula is on the more viscous side and not in a bad way. It was like, applying jelly to your PB&J in that the jelly stayed exactly where I put it. So very satisfying to manipulate, if that makes sense. I gave my bottle a good shake and I had no need to fish for those glitters. You will want to finish with a glitter smoothing top coat and a glossy top coat. And Dom brings us till the music stops. This is described as a deep purple base with a shimmer that shifts gold to green to blue. This one's inspired by late night rock band parties. My husband and I totally had a ton of those way back in the day. This is 1350 and has a cap of 600 bottles. This is stunning, it's beautiful. And I'm saying that again, even as a non-purple person, um, this is really pretty. It's a strong shimmer. It's what I would consider a foil-like effect, meaning the shimmer is on the larger side and it will give you a shimmery type of sparkle. It almost looks wet when it dries down, if that makes sense, especially if you used a nice gel-like top coat to finish it off. It's very shifty. Now you will see just a touch of your visible nail line if you have a prominent one. If that bugs you, I would suggest a nude to you base coat or a blurring base coat, whichever you prefer. Regardless, it's gorgeous, lots of shift. And Danglefoot brings us what's your favorite scary movie. This is described as an inky blue base with black and blue to red to maroon shimmer and silver hollow flakes. This is inspired by the first scary movie the maker ever watched in the 90s during a sleepover. Price is $13.50 and there's a cap of 250 bottles. So I was super excited when I saw Midnight Blue Base and reddish type of multi-chrome shimmer. And it's exactly that. Now I want to note, it is so vampy that in outside of like super, super bright lights, it will take on more of a black appearance on your nails. Now in that more vibrant lighting, yes, you'll absolutely see that there is a blue tint to it. This multi-chrome shimmer has a lovely red shift. It's almost like the black to red multi-chrome pigment, but not quite, but I, I do think it's close. I'm not sure if it's the same thing or not, but anyways, you'll see a primary red glow to this in person and at more extreme angles it does have this almost deeper maroon cast to it. I'm going to suggest three coats and a glossy top coat. And Dreamland Lacquer brings us Pink Pajama Party. This is a bright nearly neon pink with pink to gold shifty shimmers. This is inspired by the pajamas you might have worn to a slumber party. Price is 13 and there's a cap of 500 bottles. So this week I've been talking about bright nail polishes and wanting to see those neons and neon pastels. And this is it. This is one of my top picks this month. It is so pretty. It's vibrant. I know this will 100% skew on your monitor or your screen, whatever you're watching on. So please note this is a, I think it's a, a straight up true neon pink. It's so bright and gorgeous in person. 
It has a curly formula and a squishy one at that too. So I would suggest three lighter coats, just allow it to slowly build up. This is gonna look fantastic on any skin tone. Now the shimmer is just a touch muted on my photos because it is overwhelmed by that neon color. So please know in person, it does have a shimmery particle effect when you're looking at it straight on. And here is DRK Nails. This is Slumber Party 10, Zero Party, described as a blue jelly base with large particle, ultra bright multichrome chameleon pigment that shifts blue, purple, magenta with copper to gold at extreme angles. This is inspired by the preference of sleeping over partying. I agree with that. Price is 1360 and there's a cap of 400. This is stunning. If you like those really obnoxious, in your face, apparent multichromes, this is for you. It's for me too. I'm going to suggest three coats. This also has that wet looking appearance when you use a really glossy top coat with it because it's got that larger particle. This has a primary easy shift of this tealish sort of color and then blue and purple. I'm giving you a, a okay representation on this really odd looking angle here with my finger wiggles, but I just wanted you guys to see how shifty this one is. When you have your nails flat in front of your face to look at them, you'll see that gorgeous gold and orange come out. Three coats and a glossy top coat is perfect for this. And here is Emily to Molly. Speaking of multichromes, this is Greater Glory, described as a green to purple multichrome with pink to gold iridescent flakes. This is inspired by the game of Heroes of Might and Magic. Price is 13 and there's a cap of 320 bottles. Okay, so if you're wanting a comparison between the two, I'm going to say it's a different multichrome pigment. I almost dare say that the pigment going on in the Emily de Molly is more of a truer duochrome. I'm mostly seeing that emerald green, that jewel tone to that strong jewel toned purple. And then of course it's got the iridescent flakes to counteract that too. So just throwing it out there, I do think that they're different. I'm going to suggest two, possibly three coats, depending on the length of your nails and a good glossy top coat as those flakies do give a bit of thirstiness because they're on the chunkier side. And Ethereal brings us Friday Night. This is described as a cool toned pink with a strong blue shimmer. This is inspired by early 2000s sleepovers. Price is 13 and there is no cap. This is stunning. Now, there's a ton of pinks this month and I really want to point out the, out of the ones that I swatched, I don't think that they're close to each other. Yes, you can say they're related by pinks, but say this one, KB Shimmer and Dreamland, so very different. I digress. So Ethereal is a stunning pink. It's very flattering. It's got this vibrant pastel sort of look to it. And because it's cool toned, those of you who are warm undertoned, this is going to pop well on you. I think it's a universally flattering pink. And the shimmer is just gorgeous. My full hand shot gives you a good idea of what I'm seeing in person. I think three light coats because it's very plumping. Go soft on your brush strokes to prevent streaking too. And a good glossy top coat is going to be perfect for this. It's just really pretty. It's soft. It's dreamy and it's almost milky in appearance. And Femme Fatale is described as an extremely sheer and ethereal orchid purple base with luminous red, orange, green shifting shimmer, hollow pigment, and bronze reflective glitters. This one's 13 with a cap of 500. So we've got a very intentionally sheer color going on here. This is versatile, as you'll see in the Will It Topper segment. I think if you want to wear it by itself, it gives you this almost amped up sort of neutral peachy color. It's pretty warm. Now there is a bit of a reddish cast. I think you'll see it if you layer it over darker colors. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I realize that. But wearing it by itself, it's this very warm, glowy look. And it's very sparkly because of the silver reflective glitters. Now it does have a lovely soft shift. You can see on my macro there. I'm seeing that in person too. It's this orange to gold look. This does dry down textured and a bit thirsty. So you'll want to finish with a good glossy top coat over a glitter smoothing top coat. And Hearts and Promises brings us friendship bracelets. This is described as a teal when cold to pale teal when warm thermal with scattered hollow and teal metallic flakes and shimmer. This is 1350 with a cap of 300 bottles. This is an incredibly flattering, vibrant type of teal. It is really, really pretty. I, I enjoyed this one. Now, the thermal properties are quite reactive, but I will note that I think they're more on the subtle side. My full hand shot here in just a moment gives you a good idea. When it's warm, it's, of course, a paler sort of teal, and then it darkens a touch when you're in cooler 
climates. Regardless, it's very pretty. And I love the matchy match look of the metallic flakes and each of the respective thermal colors. I didn't have any texture from this, so I think a good thicker glossy top coat is perfect to smooth out those flakes. Jen and Berries brings us light as a feather. This is described as a light blue jelly base with red, orange, gold, green shifting shimmer loaded with hollow flakes. This is 1325 with a cap of 500 bottles. This is so pretty. It's very glowy. And in our PR notes, it does state that this is more of that what is called a pseudo type of opacity, meaning you're going to get a softer finish, but what's going to make it look like it's opaque over your smile line is the amount of shimmer here. I 1000% agree with that. I think on my clears, I could kind of see through it a little bit, but to like, if you're just kind of glancing, you don't see it. So take with that what you will. I do think this one's versatile if you wanted to play around with it, but this is stunning by itself. I personally would not layer this. Again, I'm getting ahead of myself and I'm going to suggest three coats and a glossy top coat. This has quite a bit of a glow. You'll mostly see that reddish appearance with an easy green shift at angles. And KB Shimmer brings us silky drawers. This is described as a muted orchid base with lavender to bubblegum pink shifting shimmer and pink reflective glitter. This one's inspired by the sleepover in Greece. Price is 12 and there is no cap. Speaking of must have pinks, this is a really flattering one too. I don't think outside of it being a muted sort of pink or like a more dreamy sort of pink like the ethereal i think if you wanted to you could absolutely get both honestly if i didn't swatch the ethereal and the kb shimmer i 100 percent would purchase both of these they're beautiful i i would not say that they're close per se i mean outside of just being pink but anyways this is such a flattering color it's got a bit of a cool tone to it but at the shift at angles it does have a warm tone it's just very interesting and of course it's got that kb shimmer gorgeous reflective glitter finish. It's so sparkly in any lighting that you're in. I think three super light coats, a glossy top coat and a glitter smoothing top coat is perfect for this. It'll smooth it out because it does have texture from those glitters. Lots and lots of sparkle to see here. And Luna Lacquer brings us BFFs Bedazzling and Boys. This is a neon purple, almost pink with pink reflective glitters and blue to green purple shifting flakes and pink shifting flakes. So we've got a very jelly-like formula here. It is easy to build up and it does have a softer type feel in how it looks in terms of opacity. Now it is a true jelly. So I think if you have a super prominent free edge at really, really bright lights, you might see your smile line. It does have an incredibly plumping, super squishy formula to it. So I'm gonna suggest going in very, very light and let this one slowly build up and let the texture from the previous coat of those reflective glitters build up your opacity as you go on to your second and third coat. Finished with a glitter smoothing top coat and a glossy top coat, and you're good to go. This is another very flattering pink, and I like how the flakes pop so iridescent against that raspberry-ish sort of base. And Monarch, again, speaking of pinks that are not dupes, brings us Double Dare. This is a wild berry neon with violet blue shimmer and multi-sized black glitters. This one's 13 with no cap. This looks so good on me. I'm here for these neon colors. In case it is getting skewed on your monitor, in my opinion, I do agree with the official description. It's a neon cool toned berry pink. Medium to deep skin tones. This is gonna pop so good on you. And I can see this being a badass petty polish for this summer too. You might need a glitter smoothing top coat if your top coat is on the thinner side as this does have lightest bit of a texture. Overall, the formula is incredibly smooth. I think two coats for most is gonna be perfect too. And Night Owl brings us whispers and giggles. This is a cool toned lavender base glowing with orange to gold to green iridescent shimmer. This one is inspired by its namesake during slumber parties. Price is 13 and there is no cap. All right, so we've got some more beautiful, soft, dreamy type of shimmers. This is so pretty too. I mean, this month is dangerous with all these dreamy sort of looks. This is so packed full of shimmer. You're mostly going to see this orangey sort of cast that you see on the video in person. And it does have a very easy shift over to this goldish and then green at angles. You'll get a bit of an idea from that on my macro shot here in just a moment. I'm going to suggest three coats as it does have a really jelly like finish to it. Let it build up. I had no issues with squishiness or dry time or anything. So I went in normal Trisha style coats for myself. 
and three coats with my glossy top coat was perfect. And Pampered Polishes brings us Twinkies and Wine. This is a creamy pastel bubblegum pink base with pink, red, and silver flakes inspired by the sleepover scene in Greece. Price is 13 and there is no cap. Again, with the pinks, they're all stunning and very, very pretty. This is another really flattering one. I do think it has this very pastelish sort of lean in person. On my monitor, it's coming out color accurate, but in case things get skewed because camera does not like reds and pinks, it is a bubblegum pink. I would say it has more of a pastel lean. I think two coats was perfect on this. It has a super creamy formula. It has quite a bit of a uh, squishy sort of feel and the brush is quite fluffy. So because of that, I would just cautious, try not to overload that brush too much. And I didn't have any texture from the little tiny flakes here. And Paradox brings us tucking myself in. This is described as a black jelly base with shifty cobalt blue to deep purple magnetic pigment, silver flakes, scattered hollow, and finished with pink to purple iridescent flakes. This one's inspired by Bianca Del Rio from RuPaul's Drag Race. Price is $13.50 and there's a cap of 250 bottles. This is gorgeous. You can magnetize this and it looks hella cool or you can leave it by itself and it is still incredibly glowy. This shot right here is just stunning. I don't have top coat on here because I was gonna go in with the magic magnetic, magnetic top coat and you can see it doesn't dry flat either. So any top coat's great if you don't wanna magnetize it. If you do, it has a heavy particle feeling to it but it still reacts incredibly well with the magnetic top coat. You'll wanna finish with a very plumping glossy top coat though if you magnetize it because I just felt like it, it helped with the movement of the magnetic particles, just that illusion going on. If you have falsies or you're using gel X or something, I did have a touch of staining with this. So I would suggest regardless, make sure you use a really good protective base coat of some sort. And Psych Minerals brings us Look At Me. This is described as a mid-toned purple with silver reflective glitter and hollow shimmer. This one's in also inspired by the sleepover scene in Greece. This one's 13 with a cap of 250 bottles. So again, we've got this incredible reflective glitter bomb from Psych Minerals. Molly does these so well. I humbly asked her, AKA pestered her for a neon pastel set with this finish. It's so pretty and so blingy. It has a thicker formula to it. So you'll wanna go in very, very light on your coats. Use that texture from your previous coat to adhere the next. Go in for three if you have any type of free edge. If you're rocking nubbins, you might be able to get away with two coats. You'll definitely need a glitter smoothing top coat with your glossy top coat to smooth this out as it will have quite a bit of texture. It's such a flattering, cool toned pink and it is so, so sparkly. And Rogue Lacquer brings us Boys Ugh. This is described as a pale lavender base with soft pink gold green shimmer and scattered hollow sparkle. Price is $13.50 and there is no cap. Okay, so we've got another excellent glowy type of blue. It is so pretty. This is soft and just delicate and dreamy. I think three coats was perfect for it. It does dry down very flat because it's so packed full of shimmer. You'll want to use a plumping glossy top coat with this. Now, I know what you're thinking. You, you're thinking, Trish, we saw Bo Rev, we saw Night Owl, and now you're showing us Rogue. How do they compare? And guess what? Surprise, uh, happy birthday. Here is your comparison. I wore each of these at three coats. I've got Bow Rev on the left, in the middle is Night Owl, and on the right is Rogue Lacquer. You can see the bases are quite different. I think the shimmer is quite different between them two. So yes, I would classify them in the same dreamy, shimmery category. No, they are absolutely not dupes. So Feel free to uh, be dirty, dirty enabled that way. I'm very sorry, but I knew it was coming and I am predicting the future at this point. So here is the comparison. You're very welcome. Again, happy birthday. Enjoy the comparison. Sassy Sauce brings us Pillow Fight. This is described as a purple and cold to pink and warm thermal with a glowy blue to green shimmer. This one's 13 with a cap of 500 bottles. Carrie absolutely knows her way around purples and I love both the cold and the warm state because if there's one other color she like excels so good at, it's also a good pink. This is such a lovely, fun thermal. It's very reactive as you'll see here in just a moment at the tra transition shot. 
I'm gonna suggest going up to three coats with it, light coats, mind you. It has a curly, smooth, almost creamy-like formula to it, but I wanted to cover all my bases and I thought that third coat was necessary. True to neonish sort of pigment and thermal pigment, it does dry down very, very harshly flat. So you'll need a good glossy top coat to gloss up that shimmer. And you can see just how contrasting both the cold and the warm states are. It's so pretty. This shimmer does have a soft shift between green and blue, but I think what's gonna catch your eye's attention the most is just the straight thermal color goodness. And Sweetheart Polish brings us Just Peachy. This is a creamy peach base with pink to orange to gold shifting Aurora Flakes. Inspired by a dreamy peach and pink slumber party setup, price is 13 and there's a cap of 250 bottles. Okay, so we've got another curly type of formula. This has that juicy sort of squish factor to it. I'm gonna suggest three light coats if you have any type of free edge, just to kind of amp it up. On that second coat, I struggled because I was like, you know, I could probably stop. But after I went in for an incredibly thin third coat, I liked that. Now keep in mind my preference is I like it thick and yeah. I prefer my polishes like that. You'll wanna finish with maybe a thin, thin layer of glitter smoother, possibly, depending on how thick your glossy top coat is, mostly because the flakes do give you just a slight bit of thirstiness and a bit of texture. So it's gonna depend on what you've got in your top coat arsenal. Overall, I thought this was really flattering on me. I was pleasantly surprised. I actually liked it on my skin tone, even though I'm very warm undertoned. And Wildflower Lacquer brings us pause over people. This is described as a purple leaning indigo base with pink to gold shifting shimmer and hollow flakes. This is 1375 with no cap. This is another really pretty polish, especially it being purple. It's very glowy. It's not quite what I would classify as a kitchen sink. I'm always saying I don't really care for kitchen sink polishes. This is one of those just glowy, shimmery, hollow flaky goodies. Kind of like the Jen and Berries in that respect, that it's just glowy and I just, I like these types of finishes. Now this will almost give you a harsh dry down because it's so packed full of goodies. Finish with a plumping glossy top coat, a gel like one, if you will, and you're good to go. This one's gonna also gonna be very universally flattering across the board for skin tones. And I think three light to normal coats is perfect for opacity. And last but not least, we are making it through here. We've got Zombie Claw. This is dead tired, described as a grape base with Aurora shimmer and reflective silver glitters, and it glows in the dark. This one's inspired by playing with monster high dolls at sleepovers. Price is $13.50 and there's a cap of 300 bottles. This is soft, it's flattering, and I'm really digging Zombie Claw's latest uh, turn over to these light, delicate colors. She is just kicking ass with them so well. I think three coats is perfect for buildup. If you have an incredibly prominent free edge, you might see a touch of your smile line, even built up to three coats because it is just one of those softer type of delicate shades. The shimmer is quite strong in person. It's got a dominant gold sort of appearance. Now you'll wanna finish with a glitter smoothing top coat and a glossy top coat because we do have some reflective glitter action going here. All right, we're gonna wrap this up with the Will It Topper segment. This is where I use a black swatch stick to demonstrate if polishes have layering capabilities. We've got so many finishes to check out here at the till end. Baroness X works. You can get a strong blue shimmery effect, but it just mutes out that pink base. So it passes. Beau Rev, this is just ridiculous. I mean, that shimmer is ridiculous. This passed the test, it got extra credit, and then it went and did community service too. It's, it's gorgeous. And I think it works over anything. Cameo works too. I think you can get an idea of how subtle that magnetic effect is, but over a dark color, you can make it more obvious. Chameleon, I wasn't sure this one was gonna work, but it does. And that very jello-like formula applies really well. Just be careful. You'll not want to get any uh, streaking with it because it's jelly-like, but it does. I think it works beautifully over white. I think it works beautifully over really light colors. Dom, Stunning, passes the test. Of course, it's a foil. Danglefoot. This one's really interesting. I don't think it needs an undie. I don't really see a whole lot of versatility, but I do want to know in person that red shimmer just glowed over black and it's just not picking up on the camera. Dreamland. Honestly, I think it's too stunning to 
wear as a topper. This is one that you just want to wear by itself. So my personal preference is, uh, I don't think so. DRK, back in the day, we needed black undies to use our multi-chromes, and that is no longer the case. So this is another one that I would say wear by itself. Emily Damali, same thing as the DRK. Yes, it it looks really cool, but it doesn't need undies because it's multi-chrome prettiness. Ethereal, she does these so good. I love her blue shimmer so much. And despite it being like overly almost milky looking, there was minimal streaking. So kudos to that. I think it passes the test. Femme Fatale, this is what I'm talking about. You can see the red action here for lack of better words. So yes, you can wear this either way and it passes with flying colors. Hearts and Promises is kind of like the chameleon. I wasn't convinced that it was going to look great, but it does. And I think over lighter colors, this is going to look fantastic. So whites, I can even see other pastel colors. You can just play up with that cold state. Jen and Berries. Oh, Jen and Berries. It passes. It's so pretty. And it looks like its own polish over black. So honestly, I would stick with matchy match blues and indigos and purples and blacks. KB Shimmer. This is ridiculous. Like I, I really didn't think this was going to work. And it's really, really pretty. In person, that shimmer is just so glowy. So yes, passes with flying colors. Luna also passes. It's so sparkly. It almost like looked like its own respective topper in person. So really interesting. I think you can play with this one a lot. Monarch was like the KB shimmer to me. I was just shook when I saw what it looked like over black. Both of these are just really, really pretty. I think you can get a little creative with this one too. Night Owl is stunning. So of course the Bow Rev, the Night Owl, and spoiler alert, the Rogue are going to work. It also gives a great demonstration of how packed these are with that shimmer. Pampered Polishes. So to me, I don't think this works. Like it does in theory and on the video, but I just think it's too creamy. It's like putting a cream over a cream in my opinion. And the Paradox. The Paradox is so stunning. This is just ridiculous. It looks like a galaxy over black. So does it work? Yes, 100,000% it works. This would also be good if you wanted to conserve your bottle. Psych Minerals also looks fantastic. This looks so sparkly and blingy in person. I think you can use this over a lot of other colors. So as I was saying previously with the Bow Rev and the Night Owl, the Rogue also looks really cool too. I think you can get pretty creative with this one and kind of adventure out there with it. The Sassy Sauce. Okay, so it does work. I think it does. But I think the formula is just so creamy good. I think you're kind of doing yourself a bit of a disservice wearing it as a topper. Sweetheart Polish almost looks kind of milky over black. But this is another one that I enjoyed too much by itself. It was deliciously squishy. So I'm going to say that I would wear it by itself. Wildflower. Ridiculous. It looks so good. This passes with flying colors. I think you can get really adventurous with this one too. And then finally, we've got the zombie claw. Zombie also toppers really, really good. And you can see how much shimmer is in there. The shimmer was interesting to me because it took on almost an amber effect. So the non-polished item I have to show you guys this month is KB Shimmer's uh, Sugar Scrub in the scent Chocolate. We have chocolate for our scent this month. I, I liked how you can kind of see it. It's got this um, like milk chocolate and almost caramel looking sort of uh, swirls going through it too. This is a really interesting scent, and I think a lot of people are going to be super divided on it. Um, to me, to me, it smells like it smells like hot chocolate. Like when you go to the store, you get the little packets, open that packet and sniff in it. That's exactly what it smells like. It's just straight chocolate. There's no other undertones. It's just chocolate, not like bitter chocolate. I guess there is an undertone to it because it's milk chocolate. I think almost like when you have a bag of Halloween candy and it's got a ton of like Tootsie Rolls in it and you can kind of smell that chocolatey flavor to it, that's what it's like. But I, I really do think like, if you're like, Trisha, what the hell are you talking about? Go open up a pack of, of Swiss Miss hot chocolate and this is what it smells like, at least to my nose. It's, it's just straight, it, it's powdered chocolate is what I'm smelling. So if that's your jam, um, this month is definitely going to be for you. 
Um, how do you use it? It makes a fantastic, uh, I guess you could call it the old Avon um, 30 second Manny, uh, where you just use it. You can use it on your hands. Um, I would say probably after you've painted and everything's dried and stuff because it is very oil based. I mean, it is it is heavy. I know you're, you can't really see um, you can't really see a whole lot in there, but through the camera, but um, it, it's very heavily oil based. My favorite way to use it is in the shower. Um, after I've washed, after I've rinsed, right before I'm about to get out. Usually it's right after I shaved too. Um, if shaving is your thing, I will just lather it up everywhere, everywhere. And it will leave you so soft. It is so oil based that after you rinse it off, you don't have to put lotion. At least I don't. And I'm a pretty dry skinned person. Um, I get real just real dry so, so easily. It's fantastic for that. I also use it on my feet when I want a really quick, um, you know, I guess 30 second pedicure, if you will. Um, they're, they're very heavily oil based and the scent is delicious. Um, the scent is a little bit on the strong side. So if you're going to use it in the shower, be prepared that your whole bathroom, uh, if you're in uh, an apartment like me, um, if I, I mean, I can't imagine anyone having too big of a bathroom, but that's, that's not an issue, but Regardless of standard size bathrooms, your whole bathroom is going to smell like whatever your KB Shimmer sugar scrub is. So just wanted to put it out there for scent sensitivities or anything like that. If you use it just for, say, like your hands and you just wanted to do like the 30 second manicure idea, whatever, um, you're going to smell it too. They are quite packed in terms of scents. The site is going to go up for official wish listing. If I beat wish listing by the time this video goes up. Um, it will go up Sunday, February 25th, and it's at any given time. Usually it's mid to late afternoon and you can get in there. You can make an account if you haven't already, and you can add things to your wish list and either see what awful damage is going to happen to your wallet or, um, you know, whittle and pare down what you're going to get, what have you. So also keep in mind, not everything is going to be listed. I know that's a bit of a bummer because we all want to see things right here, right now on Sunday's wish list day. But if it's not on the site, you don't see the item, whether it's polished or non-polished item, please know it's just the maker hasn't emailed us information yet. And once we get information and or swatches, product uh, photos, what have you, then it gets on the website. So just be patient. Everything will be there at least at the very minimum before the shop opens. Uh, the shop is going to open for official shopping on a pre-order basis starting March 1st at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And it's going to run until March 4th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. So you can get in there at that time. Please note there are caps to some of the items and some things just go fast. Let's go into uh, the Facebook group. If you want to join with me, I'm going to be scrolling through there and we're going to talk about things that caught my eye. If I thought last month was expensive, I knew this beautiful color palette for slumber party was going to be ridiculous. And I knew we were going to get a lot of dreamy types of shimmers. And I am absolutely correct <laughs> in that regard. The first one that comes up is Alchemy Lacquers. I really love it. She's also doing, she's got a duo with Jen and Berries, which you're going to want the Jen and Berries too, obviously. I definitely want this, this set completed. And this is stunning. It's beautiful. I really like it. And I really like that, that drip shot. I was actually thinking to myself, one of these days I want to get practice with uh, some drip shots myself like that. That's so nice. Maybe one of these days I'll ask a maker, hey, let me buy an extra bottle so I can get messy and for the sake of art. Uh, polished for days. This one's really pretty. I love, love this one. It almost looks like a Cinderella sort of polish. I really like it. Um, of course, we've got uh, Lizzie, Lizzie McGuire as the inspiration, which I'm here for. Vanessa Molina is back with another of her flaky bombs. I'm beginning to think that like these super metallic flaky bombs are like, this is like her jam. She's really, I guess, mastered it as it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And this one's really pretty. I definitely going to put it in my wish list. I want to see more swatches of it, probably even an application video because it does look like it might be able to top her. So we'll see. I'm 100% Phoenix's uh, Chibi Usa is going to be coming with me. I'm a big Sailor Moon fan and I love this one. Um, it's so pretty. It's such a delicate looking pink and Phoenix has really good shimmers. So that is 100% going 
going to be coming home to me. Cuticula really owned it on this polish. Now I am saying I, I want bright colors. I am saying I want all these really in your face sort of springy sort of colors, but I know this kind of goes against that grain, but it's a purple with red shimmer and I will never get tired of this mixture. I will never get tired of that look. It's so, so stunning. All mixed up lacquers. Um, I think I had uh, the first time I saw this was a couple of days ago. I saw Lisa's swatch of it. We always get together and we Google and Google over polishes that have caught our eyes that we have swatched that the other person didn't get for PR, that kind of thing. And I just, I saw her swatch of this and I fell in love with it. It's so pretty. And it's inspired by 10 Things I Hate About You, which is such a sweet movie. So I really liked that one. BCB Lacquers is inspired by Girl Talk. I love this game so freaking much. And I love this Crelly mixture. This looks like, it's almost like a, like a speckled egg kind of. Very, very springy looking. So uh, I really appreciated this one. I, I like this one a lot. Sweet and Sour, um, Pillow Forts and PJs. I really like that. Uh, she said, sorry, not Pillow Farts. That's funny. Should have been named Pillow Farts. That would have been funny. Anyways, uh, this polish looks really pretty. I do see that it's on a swatch stick. And so I'm hoping to see some more uh, swatches of it. And I think it looks like it's going to be a really strong shimmer. And I really like that. Pie Colors. I love this. I want to see some more swatches of it, but it looks really pretty. I like that it's got this inky sort of base and I can tell that there's going to be maybe a reddish pinkish sort of shimmer on that so that is going to go in my wish list to uh, see if I can spy out some more swatches and information on that one so inspired sense was another one that really caught my eye when um, she's got cuticle salve and uh, she makes it's almost like a like a balm if you will and the scent notes to what she's got for March have just intrigued me. Um, it says it's her uh, a signature fragrance called Dreamland, a unique blend of amber, jasmine, creamy milk, chocolate, French lavender, lemon and vanilla. That sounds really interesting. I'm not sure how the creamy milk chocolate would go with the other things, but it's, you know, it's this really not bizarre, but just really unique blends that always somehow work. I'm thinking I'm thinking of uh, Chris's uh, Vapid Nail Elixir blends um, that come to mind and it, they just work. So I'm, I'm assuming it, obviously it's got to be good. It's a signature scent, but that sounds like it's going to smell really good. I'm very intrigued by that one. Um, BKL's uh, You're Finally Awake, inspired by Skyrim's famous opening lines. This is so pretty. Um, it looks like it's going to be a dulled type of gray base and blue shimmer. I, I'm always here for the blue shimmer. And this is stunning. So that one is 100% coming home with me too. The next one, if you need some cuticle oil, is a Northern Stars cuticle oil. So if you haven't been following her uh, PPU offerings each month, uh, I almost always, I think every month I drool over her offerings. Um, they're basically these cute little curated, almost like samplers, but they're pretty generous uh, sample samples in the cuticle rollers. And uh, this month we have uh, slumber party snacks. So jelly beans, sweethearts, and banana taffy. I'm a big foodie scent person. I love bakery scents, things like that. And I really, I think these are going to be super awesome, especially the banana taffy. That's going to be great. Um, the next one is Cleonade. When I saw um, Lisa Swatch of this, this was one of the ones that she had, had sent for me to check out. Um, I fell in love with it. It's not just a white milky crelly with reddish shimmer it looks like it's got these reflective sort of flakes almost like metallic sort of blue flakes in it too so it just looks like a really fun just beautiful almost also like delicate looking finish so this one's gonna bypass that wish list and come straight home with me um unicorn magic skincare this is so delightful um if you haven't heard me talk about Unicorn Magic Skincare, um, I am not next to my nail desk right now. But when I am next to the nail desk, uh, Glitter Wall, that's usually where I'm at. Um, P.S. I'm not over there because I can't figure out the lighting situation. It's a headache. I might even have to upgrade my camera. I don't know. But that's where I go back to the window if you're curious. Her balm is so thick. Um, it's, it, it's really good for like super cold weather or if you just got out of the shower it's chef's kiss. It's a really, really good balm. And this month is scented in um, 
strawberry bonbons. So yes, ma'am, that is that that's coming home with me. And again, paint it pretty. Um, they are just killing the shimmer game here. This is stunning. I really love this. The base color, it just from the swatch sticks, looks like it's going to be this lighter type of lavender sort of color. And oh, it just looks lovely. Very, very pretty. Um, this one is probably going to bypass the wish list and go straight into my cart. So that's it for what caught my eye this month on the Maker's Spoilers thread. There is more than likely more that I haven't posted yet to the thread, but there's a ton, ton of beauties this month to check out and awesome, smelly good stuff too. Um, don't forget to leave a comment on this video to join my giveaway. I will be choosing winners on the Tuesday before the shop opens at 4 p.m. Central. And again, I will reply to your comment and I'll also have a pinned comment at that time, possibly a little bit later but I will do my best to do 4 p.m. Central Time. So as always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.